Right, well, it is here, the PS5. That's right, us here in the UK got hold of this device today. You guys in America and other parts of the world, you got it a week early. I'm not jealous, I'm just disappointed. But, as mentioned a few months ago, I am going to do a full series of videos relating to data and migration and ultimately what things you can do with the PS5 with regards to data. The PlayStation, like anyone that works in IT, it has a place in my heart, largely because we've all grown up with consoles. So, when I first heard about this device, and especially when I heard it was going to have an expansion bay that took advantage of NVMe SSDs, I was super chuffed. Let's be honest, NVMe SSDs is something we've talked about here on the channel, and if you're watching this video and you aren't sure what that means, NVMe is a super fast uh, PCIe-based SSD. It takes the boundaries of traditional SSDs, which give you about three to five hundred megabytes per second and moves it into the thousands and when the playstation was first announced of course it was talking about speeds of up to nine thousand megabytes per second which is insane now a lot of us myself included were very very disappointed when we learned that sony was disabling that nvme upgrade feature at launch a number of us were looking at the 825 gigabytes of um, storage inside this device then finding out after the you know the software and stuff like that it got down to like 600 odd we were a bit gutted and we wanted to know why the nvme was not available now a lot of that i already mentioned in my other video and it has turned uh, to be true the reason is that nvme is in the current spectrum of commercial availability and right now the best you can get is the um, SN850 Black WD, the Fire CUDA 520 from Seagate, and the Samsung 980 Pro. These are the fastest that are out there, and even these only provide between five and 7,000 megabytes per second. Consequently, if they were installed inside, although if they had enabled that feature and you could see them, the result would be that if you install the NVMe at first, the way the PlayStation's just been released, and I'm sure it can't quite hit that 9,000 now because the games haven't been you know, built that can take advantage of that, and the developers haven't really expanded what they know about the system. If you did put one of these inside and they enabled that feature, it would probably work absolutely fine. But a few years down the line, as games get released and the development cycle continues and R&D progresses, the result would be that the core system would be able to play games that would utilize that 9,000 megabytes per second compressed data, but you would have a drive that couldn't sustain it and would end up as a bottleneck, which would be especially annoying in multiplayer games. So the reason they've disabled it is not Sony being a bunch of dicks. It really isn't. It's because the SSD market isn't quite there. It should have been there with uh, things like the E18 Physium controller uh, that we're going to see hopefully in a follow-up version to the Fire Cuda series. And again, given the naming structure, 510, 520, let's be realistic, it's probably going to be the Fire Cuda 530. When drives like that arrive or revisions of the Samsung or the WD series start to arrive with their own controllers that can provide that kind of speed, that is when Sony will enable that feature. Now, for all intent and purposes, it looked like NVMEs of that grade should have been released now. But I think a lot of that can come down, of course, to COVID and a complete change of working practices and the delays that it's put on supply chains, the delays it's um, put on the simple supply chain and you know construction of these SSDs. So frankly, Sony have taken, a, I would argue, quite a mature stance and not just trying to cash in early doors by saying to people we aren't enabling that feature because there's a good chance these SSDs are not going to provide enough performance. They're not going to give you the oomph. And if we allow you to buy those SSDs and install them and use them, later on your gameplay experience is going to be woefully affected by, affected by it. And that's the whole reason. It's the same problem that we have with utilising external storage when they talk about using external hard drives and SSD for the PS4 games. That's fine because the PS4 wasn't running games more than 120 to maximum 500 megs per second in their architecture. You could use faster drives. It wouldn't make a difference though, would it? Now, the, S, uh, the USB ports, USB 3.1 Gen 2 on these devices also only give you 1000 megs output, which means you couldn't run a PS5 game from an external drive anyway. And that's what brings us back 
to these NVMEs. It's the idea that it's not Sony that's the problem here. It's the delays at NVMe SSD production at PCIe Gen 4 times 4 connections. The, S, um, the SSD drive inside, and at the end of this video, I will show a test that I did of installing an NVMe inside this device, but the NVMe bay inside is 2210, uh, 22110 length. It's the full length commercial NVMe, which means these NVMEs, when they do arrive, are going to provide four, eight, and even larger terabyte capacities. At the moment, you can't really get higher than about two or four TB, depending on the NAND on the board. But once that controller is commercially available from the likes of Seagate or the WD Seagate version of their um, 3D controllers, the result will be that these SSDs will arrive in a hurry. So do not buy these SSDs right now because although they might reach a halfway point where Sony see that the SSD isn't released soon and they create a kind of halfway active compromise, for now do not buy SSDs because if you buy them, not only will you have an SSD that won't work right now, but also once you have that NVMe SSD inside, if it does work, later on Sony will be able to get games running at that 9000 megs and your SSD will present a bottleneck. So that's the reason why. Now, on the end of this video, as mentioned at the title screen, I'm sorry I've delayed it this long. It's a bit clickbaity. I do apologize. We um, we took this apart. I took apart my PS5 and I installed an NVMe. For those that aren't aware, and I will do a full upgrade guide um, along with a bunch of other stuff we're doing on this device with PS4 migration and stuff. We took the device apart and again, there should be some picture in picture in here. So first we take the base off, then we took the side panel off. Um, after the side panel was taken off, we got to that NVMe slot. We removed the cover of the NVMe slot. We installed um, a drive inside. We went for the uh, 980 Pro uh, drive inside. That's the Samsung drive that promotes up to 7,000 megs. Popped it inside, and that was a fresh installation. That was no um, pre-installed GUI, no system software, because I wanted to make sure that this wasn't a latest thing uh, disable uh, setting that had been in the newest firmware. I wanted to use the device at its base firmware. So no internet connection, no uh, setting the device up with uh, firmware first, no user login information. So I put the SSD inside, then from there, put the cover back on, put the side back on, and powered on the device. As I'm sure you can see on the screen right now, this is what greeted us. It was the system refusing to go any further with the installation because it knew there was an NVMe installed in the expansion bay and it wasn't going to engage. It was making it abundantly clear that you have to remove that NVMe in order for the system to boot, which left us with no choice but to power the device down and give up. Now, since then, I have installed the full firmware and logged in and set up the device, powered it down and installed the NVMe, and we were greeted with exactly the same screen. So again, that is where things stand right now. And again, I wouldn't have made this video, but there is just no videos online right now that show, even though this system's been out a week, that what happens with an NVMe inside. So where do we go from here? Well, right now, NVMEs are in development, and I have spoken to a few uh, representatives of uh, different brands, particularly Seagate and WD, about their development right now of increased performing SSDs, and they are both saying the same thing very early next year. If you look at anything to do with the E18 Fizzy and controller, you will learn even more then. But do stay tuned. Uh, over the next few days, I'm going to be showing a bunch of videos about this brand new system and how to migrate your data over from PS4. Uh, a number of different ways to import your games over uh, your existing PS4 games. If you don't have a great internet connection or a metered connection, I'm going to go through three separate ways of doing it. And I am going to show a full hardware installation guide for installing the NVMEs on this system, which although isn't hugely useful right now, is going to be great for people to have later on down the line rather than wait for me to wait for the update and have that done. At least then you've got it one click away. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do stay tuned for more PS5 stuff. And of course, I generally don't talk a lot of PS5 on this channel, but we talk a hell of a lot about storage. And right now, this thing's internal SSD is incredibly exciting and I want to learn more about it and I want to tell you guys too. Click like if you've enjoyed the video, click subscribe to learn more and do bear in mind, 
that the SSDs for today's video were supplied by Span.com. I plugged them here on the channel quite a lot, let's be honest, but they get the job done. They are the data storage experts with nearly 30 years in the biz. They can help you every step of the way, inside and outside of console gaming. Give them a look up. Otherwise, I will see you next time.